from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. Yes, it's a very special Thai Cats Today free agency special, and I couldn't do it just on my own, so I'm very pleased to be joined by Courtney Steven, former Thai Cat now with the Thai Cats uh, in the offices. And uh, Court, it's a uh, free agency, man. It's like the it's it's day one, really, of the 2022 CFL season. I can, I can see the excitement. I can feel the excitement, man. Like, you love this stuff, don't you? You got to, man, because if you're a CFL fan, this is like the... This is like the second best holiday in the CFL, right? Next to the actual, you know, Grey Cup, the big game. Um, Man, free agency is a time when a lot of those movers and shakers are are changing spots, rotating. You get to see the rival become your new favorite superhero. So, uh, (laughs) man, you got to love free agency. And the Ticats have been getting a little bit busy so far. So it'll be cool to dive into that. Yeah, we're going to be joined by Sean Thomas Erlington. Jamal Roll will be stopping by. And we're going to be speaking with uh, Coach Butler. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I don't know when, when Butts retired, but I mean, 2018, I think you, Jamal, and uh, and Butts, were you guys all on the same uh, in the same DB room? I, it, it just feels like it's a 2018 Ticats reunion over here. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure we, we sat next to each other, too, man. These are my guys. I've, I've seen all of our car- careers continue to progress, you know, some of us in different directions, but all around the same organization it's exciting to hear about the promotion of coach butler you know that's something that was definitely earned not given he's been uh, putting his nose to grindstone in this league for years so it's a credit to him and his hard work and and all that he's done but jamal roll another exciting guy to watch play yeah jamal the fact that he's back and let's talk about the tie cats re signings because i had been saying it throughout last week that if you looked at these guys you know, who have been picked up by or re-signed by the tie cats. If another team had made those moves, like if another team had gone out and got Dane, Simone, uh, you know, a Dylan, a Jamal, Tunde, like we'd be talking about, man, that team loaded up because they're coming back. It's, it's not really the same, but I mean, the tie cats certainly taking care of business before today to put themselves in a good spot. And, and it's a very, it's a very uh, huge blessing. I don't know how else to say it. It's a blessing when you're re-signing guys of that caliber, right? They've been successful to some degree over the last couple of years. And when you're that close, you don't have to clear house and start from the ground up. There's just some fine tuning that you have to do. And and part of that process of building a championship team or a championship caliber team is having that foundation. A lot of those core guys that you mentioned, they've got the experience of going deep into the playoffs. They've got the experience of those rivalry games. And it's important to have those guys on your roster and build around them. So Ticats definitely thinking long-term with these pickups. Well, I was just about to ask, because Court, you were sold on the Ticats in 2019. And I have to think that the pitch in 2019 was similar to the one they gave, or sorry, 2020, when you came back, when you re-signed with the Tie Cats and free agency in 2020 uh, and you were sold on what they were selling. What was that pitch like? And, and how similar do you think it is for, for your coach O and, and Ed Irvy trying to, to trying to sell the Tie Cats this season? Well, it, it depends where you're at in your career and it depends where you're at in potential to play on a team and where, where you can contribute. Right. I think the huge thing that you'll ask any of these guys is the culture here, the culture and the opportunity to be successful on the team level. Those are two things that guys really want. You want a chance to get a sniff of that ring. And if you're in a room that has the right people, that's the first ingredient, right? And that's from the top down from the management, from the personnel department, uh, from the ownership. So I think that's something that people hear about, but then they want a chance to get involved in it. So that brings a lot of guys to the hammer. Then once you get in that locker room, great guys all around, guys who come to work every single day, makes it easy for you to also come to work. All right, we're going to be looking at different position groups throughout the show here. But right now, let's get into it with our first guest who signed it yesterday, Sean Thomas Erlington. Very pleased to be joined by him. Well, Ty gets have certainly been busy the last few weeks and just yesterday getting the backfield done by shining signing Sean Thomas Arlington and Malik Irons. I'm very pleased now to be joined by STE himself and STE, congratulations on the, uh, the new contract. Uh, take us through what this process was like for you getting so close to free agency. Hey, Louis. Uh, obviously, it was a very exciting moment. I mean, like we, we talked a bit before, uh, for me, it was free agency or being near free agency was pretty new for me in the sense where I used to 
uh, the, the last two times that I signed with the with the Ticats, well, it was way before free agency. So this was a little new, exploring, uh, getting um, some information, teams talking to my agent, and then him uh, repeating what they were they were telling him. And in a sense, we're like it, it was there was a lot of teams here and there asking about me, just like. It was nice. It was it was inter interesting. Very interesting. Sorry. So so, how did you come to the decision to sign with the Tie Cats? What was the difference maker? You, like, was what was the what was the reasoning for coming back? Obviously, like just just the town, just Hamilton, the, the fans. First of all, I mean, also my teammates. I saw a whole lot of people that were coming back this year, and it just it just it just made me maybe want to come back at the same time. Obviously, being surrounded by those guys and, and the run we had last year, obviously, I'm not expecting to have the same team we had last year, but I think it, we have a team that can, can go on a, on a good run again. Hey, hey, Sean, talking about that room that you're in, there's a couple other yeah. guys who signed back. Uh, tell me what the chemistry is like in that backfield, man. There's, there's dangerous people at, at all those spots. <laughs> there's there's definitely dangerous people with, with the different arsenals. I mean... What I like about this room is that obviously everybody knows at the running back spot, there's only one job. There's only one spot on the field most of the times, if you're not rotating, obviously. But we are so supportive of each other. Uh, when we watch film, we're always giving, giving, giving each other keys on things we can improve, things, things we've done well at, at the same time. And it's just, we just come every week to compete. Obviously, camp is going to be very exciting, very competitive. But I think it's going to be, it's going to be in that way, but in a good sense. How do you push each other to be better? And I, I, I asked that because last year the competition was, was tight as well across the field. How do you push each other to be better when you're competing for this, this starting running back job, but you're also teammates? What, what is that dynamic like? Well, it's, it starts with like an individual, individually, we have to like keep each other accountable, like just ourselves. And then also it's trying not to let anything slide. Sometimes there's some great games with a, a lot of good, great plays, and then they, they can overshadow the, the, the plays that are not as good. But we really we focus on really hammering those down more than the good plays so that uh, those, those mistakes or the, those lesser plays aren't, aren't repeated again. So this is the offseason. I know guys are working on their game. What's something that you want to improve on from last year? What do you want to bring to the locker room when you get to camp uh, for 2022? Uh, well, I definitely want to bring more speed. Uh, I know uh, it was it was a little hard with the last two years with COVID and stuff, uh, finding spots to work out. Obviously, it's not an excuse because there's always a way. But but I know that for many people, myself, stuff things were very different. You know, and I'm, I'm not going to repeat what everybody has been saying, but like it's it's been a, it, it was a hard journey. And I think right now, having my eyes on on well, having signed back and knowing what I want to do for next season, I'm on my, on my already in the right direction to to just bring my a game speed wise and then bring the rest of my uh rest of my skills to the field uh, what do you want to say to tie cats fans sean what uh what message do you have for for fans who are watching this or, or listening to this who are getting all amped up for uh, 2022 I, I mean i'd say I, i'm very glad to be back can't wait to see you guys can't wait to see the, the stands all all up in black and uh let's let's get a let's give it another great run that's well said. Sean, congrats on the new deal, man. It's going to be great to see you back in the black and gold. I couldn't picture you in any other colors uh, in the CFL. So I'm glad you're, you're still, you're still with the good guys. Thanks for doing this. Congrats again, buddy. All right. Now, very pleased to be joined by a CFL all-star defensive back Jamal roll. That's got a nice ring to it. He is re-signed with the tie cats and uh, Jamal congrats signing on the dotted line. How did you come to the decision to re-sign with the tiger cats? I was just patiently waiting um, and just waiting for my opportunity and just trying to maximize um, the opportunity where it presented itself. So I'm um, just glad to be back. Hey, Ro, so last year you had a really good season, uh, turned out to be an all-star season for you, but where do you take it from here? What are you, what are your plans for this season in 2022 and, and how can you improve on your game and the performance you had last year? The goal is to get everybody to be all-stars. Um, that's a personal goal, something that uh, I haven't seen before in the CFL. And uh, the ultimate goal is, you know, to finish and with the ring. 
You guys were pretty close to, to almost being all all-stars in that, in that secondary room and that defensive backs room. How, how much of, you know, Tunde coming back, Carrie will come back. How much did that play into your factor to come back to Hamilton, knowing that you got to continue to build on something that was really, you know, Des was showing flashes. Like you get to continue to build on that. How big of a factor was that for you? Coming back to a group of guys that I'm familiar with, definitely uh, it helps in your process. Uh, those guys knowing me um, behind the scenes and uh, on the field as well. So just getting another chance to play with those guys, I'm sure it'd be, uh, you know, we can turn another page and um, we can grow um, a step further. And so just see what we can do this year with it. As one of the guys who's had more experience playing at the pro level, um, you, you're one of the leaders in the locker room. So what is it like for you to embrace that role? Is it something that you relish? Is it something that you love? Is that a part of your identity? Do you think that's true that you're a leader? Uh, I think I bring a lot of uh, tangibles and things to the table where guys can, uh, you know, just kind of look at and, uh, and follow and, um, you know, turn it into their model or whatever. But um, I definitely... Um, I'm looking forward to being one of the older guys in the room and seeing what they can pick up off of me and um, seeing what I can learn from them as well because I'm, um, I'm still continue to try to learn from all the guys that, uh, that come into the locker room and that come into the building. I'm still trying to learn everyone. So always going to be a student. And that's, I mean, you know, I mentioned Des Lawrence, but when you see a guy like, like Des step up or Stavros kind of come in into the playoffs, like what, what do you, what do you make of that? And, and what does that kind of say about, you know, everybody says next man up mentality, but it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to see it in practice. Well, yeah, I think it goes into our daily preparation and uh, just the culture in the building. Everyone is comfortable um, playing with each other. And so when we're out there interacting and um, actually grinding, uh, those guys feel comfortable making plays and being themselves. And so that helps, um, you know, them transfer their play into the field. A guy that can be themselves as quick as quickly as they can um, will help them, uh, you know, on the field transition. So Coach Butler got a promotion to be a special teams coordinator. Talk to us a little bit about the energy that he brings to the room. You've been working with him for a couple of years. Right. Uh, man, shout out to, to CB, man, um, getting that promotion. I'm sure he'll still be hands on with us, but um, he'll truly be missed for sure. I hope that he doesn't uh, disappear. He doesn't ghost us <laughs> for sure. But uh, <laughs> um, No, he was tough. And, uh, you know, he cared about us truly, right? And so he cared about us as men. And uh, he just pushed us, man. He held everybody accountable. And he, uh, he didn't let anyone, you know, cut corners. So getting that accountability from top down uh, definitely helped. And so I'm sure he'll still hold us all accountable. Yeah, I was about to say, you're not getting completely off the hook uh, with uh, Coach Butts. He is the assistant defensive backs coach uh, right, heading right, into right. 2022. Yeah. So don't worry, you, you, won't get, you won't get rid of him that easy. Uh, just talk about the city of Hamilton. You, you've been here a few years now. I, I, I have to think that it's become a second home when you're here during the season. What is it about this city that you've come to embrace, that you've come to appreciate, uh, not just as a CFL town, but as a place to live? Um, I embraced it for sure, but it's, it's a raw town and they, uh, they love, the, they love football. They love the tie cats. Um, they're everything that you want in a fan. Uh, they're with us through thick and thin. Um, and the crazy thing about it is that they, they have a lot of history. And so like, even when you bump into, uh, you know, tie cat fans in a the community, they always bring up like the history and the tradition of, uh, you know, what the tie cat family is about and the tie cat organization is about. So I think that's that's cool that you can learn from them as well. And, um, you know, they're loving you. Jamal, congrats on the new deal, man. It's great to see you back in the black and gold. And I can't wait to see how you top 21, 2021 uh, this upcoming season, man. That's rock and roll. Thank you, guys. Awesome. That is Jamal Roll, who has re-signed with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. All right, thanks to Jamal Roll for stopping by in court. Let's stick with the, the secondary because – you know, the Ticats secondary was a huge part of their success in 2021 and a lot of guys coming back from last year. 
man, there's a lot of pieces that you can continue to count on. I'd say, you know, the back end, you have to shore it up. You have to protect the family, keep the roof on, keep the top on. And they did a great job of that, almost better than anyone in the league, leading in so many statistical categories. And I think that, you know, between Carriel Brooks, Jamal Roll, Tunde Adelike, you know, those are names that you can hang your hat on. And in this East division, that's heating up. I think it's going to be important to have guys like that on the back end. And, you know, there are rumors. We don't know anything. We're not going to throw out any names, but you and I have both heard a name that Ty Cats fans could be excited about. And that's all, all we can, all I, all I, we're going to say about it because, you know, we're not, a, we're not a show that deals in rumors, uh, so we're not going to say, but again, I think there's something that if, you know, if they can add a piece to their secondary, there's some good names out there floating around uh, of guys who are uh, free agents. And and at this point, it's not like you're doing uh, a, a full surgery, right? You're just putting a cherry on top of that defense. There's, you know, you got the three linebackers who played all games last year together. You've got a huge monster D line with some, some dogs up front in that middle. And, you know, you put that cherry on the top by securing the back end with guys who are familiar and whoever else fits into those gaps to, to really make it a complete 12 on defense. As the official podcast of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, we, of course, will not be the ones scooping our own guys uh, in case we hear anything. But what, what we've heard is just rumors. So let's just uh, leave it at that. Uh, Coach Butts, before we bring him in here, uh, your relationship with him. I mean, he's someone I mean, I have to think you guys are. You guys are dogs, right? Like, I mean, you guys go way back. What's your relationship like with uh, with CB here? Man, me me and uh, Coach Craig Butler, we go back further than most people even realize, you know, from the times of me playing youth football and Brampton Bulldogs and him playing for the London Falcons, then going to the OUA, uh, him at Western, me being a Laurier guy. And then, you know, through our careers, we had a couple of times to go head to head when he was in Saskatchewan and then we became teammates. So um, a guy who I have a deep respect for, I've seen him work. I've seen him make plays. Um, it's, it's great to watch him continue to thrive. And the team has really done well under his leadership, the defensive backs. So um, it's exciting to watch him continue to rise up and continue to grow and continue to, to add bricks to this foundation that's already been built. And you mentioned it with Jamal. I mean, Jamal's not not the loudest guy in the room. He's someone who lets his play lead by example. You know, same can be said for Tunde. Uh, Coach Butts has got enough energy for that entire secondary, right? I mean, what the energy that he brings to the meeting rooms, to the practice field, I mean, that is transferable. And you can really see it when, when you get the best out of the guys like he has. Yeah. And, and a culture isn't something that just is created out of thin air. It's got to come from the top down. And as somebody who's been in that locker room, as somebody who sat in those seats as a player, he understands, you know, what it means to play for somebody who's truly showing you that they're giving their all to the game. You feel a, a little bit of uh, guilt if your coach is giving his all and you're not. Right. So it's not a, it's not about him yelling and screaming to get guys motivated. These are already self-starters, but when you've got a leader like coach butts back there, um, it's easy to show up because you know that he's coming early, you know, he's staying late, you know, he's paying the price and that's the bar that he sets for his team. And uh, just the, the role, and we're going to be joined by uh, coach butts here in just a couple seconds. So before we get him, just the role special teams coordinator, I know it's like, it's, it's a big, it's a big job. I mean, it's a coordinator. It's not just a positional coach. You are a special teams coordinator. You got kicking, you got, uh, you know, uh, coverage. It, there's a whole bunch of components. Uh, why, why is coach Butler the right fit for, for S for special teams coordinator? Well, I mean, one third of the game is, is, is the kicking game, you know, whether it be uh, the field goals, the punts, the punt returns, the kickoffs, kickoff returns, whatever it may be in this Canadian game, you need to win in the kicking game. And, you know, coach Butler's had an opportunity to work alongside and play for some great coaches. And so being a student of the game and being somebody who's always developing his own skill set, I know he's going to be ready to step into this role. And it's something that he thrived in as a player as well. This guy, he used to run down there and, and stick his nose in there too. So it's nothing that he's unfamiliar with. And it'll be exciting to see him put his thumbprint on what's been a very potent Ticat special teams already. All right, I'm very pleased now to be joined by the new special teams coordinator for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Coach Craig Butler, also assistant defensive backs coach. And uh, Coach, 
congrats on the new role. Tell us how this all came about, this this promotion for you. Appreciate it, uh, Louie and Court. Um, you know, it came about just, I mean, I guess it was kind of years in the making, right? Like it's something that when you get into this business, that's kind of what you strive for is constant kind of elevation and improvement in your own, you know, in your own expertise. So, um, you know, obviously very, very blessed, very privileged to be able to have this opportunity to be the special teams coordinator, you know, coach, coach O and, um, you know, everybody else in the organization from Scott to Bob, you know, to Matt Affnick kind of, um, have stuck with me and kind of given me an opportunity and believed in me since I was a player here in 2014. So, I would say it's been a slow evolution to get to this, uh, to get to this place, but you know, I, it's something that I'm completely ready for and extremely excited for the, all the challenges and, you know, all the opportunities that are going to come along with it. So most coaches get their first coordinator job on a, a struggling rebuilding team, but you're, you're stepping into a position where you've got some guys who know how to contribute guys who are experienced and, and know how to play at a high level. So, um, are you looking forward to having some veterans and being on a team that's positioned already to, you know, put, put together some numbers as opposed to rebuilding and starting from the ground up? Yeah, absolutely. Courtney, you know, it's um, being able to kind of step into a, a position as a, you know, like this coordinator position and have guys that, that you already kind of have a bond with that you already have a trust bond with that, um, know you more importantly as a person first and kind of know what to expect when you walk into that meeting room day one, I think that's going to be huge. You know, there's guys on that team that I played with. Right. So um, not necessarily the biggest special teams, you know, contributors, but still guys that they understand what the expectations are. They understand what you are as a person and kind of uh, what you bring to a table, um, you know, and then the veterans that we have, that's ultimately the goal you know, is to hand it off to them, not by day one, but eventually, you know, throughout the season, it's, um, you know, you want them to be holding each other accountable. You want them to be uh, calling the plays out to each other. So to have veteran leadership like that, it's going to be, it's going to be huge for uh, our team and, you know, my personal development as well. You mentioned the veteran leadership, but the one thing that stuck out to me last year was how young your special teams, your coverage teams was the, the Bailey's, the Declan's, you know, Mason, uh, Ternowski. I mean, how impressed were you by, by a bunch of young players coming, you know, removed from football for two years, basically, and, and what you saw from them and how do you expect them to build on what they did last year in this new season? Yeah, it was outstanding to see those guys grow from, you know, from week one of training camp to the Grey cup, really just to see them, you know, um, expand, expand their roles and expand their, their attributes as far as what they did, you know, obviously our scouting department brings in these guys, you know, and they, they see that, you know, we, we watch film as coaches, but they, they really do all the grinding hard work and they see the, like the, um, you know, the ceiling of these guys and really what they can do. So, um, you know, but it's up to the players always to execute. And a lot of those guys, they did, they bought in, they had fun. That was the thing that you could see. They brought energy every day. And, um, you know, guys like Nick Cross, guys like Stavros, guys like Daly, as the season went on, they became more comfortable within themselves and, you know, became got out of their shell. And once I think you get a little more comfortable and you start having a little more fun, then football uh, becomes a little bit easier. So those guys were able to do that and the credits to them because they took the coaching. Um, but then, yeah, for the, for the next year, for those guys and, you know, the upcoming rookie class, it's about taking bigger strides and bigger steps and, you know, ultimately uh, completing, you know, that goal that we're all looking for. Coach, the special teams coordinator has a unique opportunity to deal with everybody on the roster, more or less from top to bottom. And so that's, that's an integral part of building the culture of the team. So tell us a little bit about the identity of these tie cats and, and how you want to help shape that, that culture that's brought so many cool cool stories to Hamilton, so many impact players to Hamilton because of that culture. Yeah, obviously, you know, special teams, I kind of have a personal connection. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a part of pride for me, obviously, you know, being, being drafted into this league and drafted as a guy who, you know, was looked at as a, as a, as a special teams player right away. And you kind of got to find your way. So 
you know, I I'm taking exactly kind of what I took, you know, what I, how I acted as a player to the, to the, uh, to the coaching room. That's, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be uh, smart. We're going to be tough, you know, we're going to be explosive, right. To sum it up real quick. That's kind of what we're looking for. And, um, you know, the, the culture that we've brought that coach O's kind of instilled throughout his years of being here. It's just about piggybacking off that, right. Making sure we're all, we're all on one cord and we're all preaching the same message. So, um, you know, guys, I think, I think what's, what's cool about special teams is it's a constant um, evolution throughout the season. You, you have an identity, but it's, and you know, this Courtney, it's the players that really shape it. Right. And it may change through the season because you may have an outlook, you know, we all want to go 18 and 0, 14 and 0, whatever it's going to be, but things happen, things change. So I think having the adaptability and um, not being too rigid about what your identity is and knowing that it'll come over time. Um, that's what's exciting is being able to have an opportunity to get your hands in the, you know, in the dirt and uh, see what happens. So we got the right players, you know, we got the right other coaches on staff to support uh, myself. So that's, what's exciting is just getting in there and, and getting to work. And how, how amped up are you to still be a, a part of the, of the DBs as the assistant DBs coach, because obviously that was a huge part of, of last season and the success you had last season and guys are coming back. Uh, how excited are you that that's still uh, part of your repertoire here? Yeah, it's great. It's great that I still have an opportunity to kind of, um, you know, help Joaquin uh, kind of transition into his full-time role. You know, he's going to be outstanding for us, you know, but it's always great to have some continuity there and for guys to kind of know what to expect, whether it's terminology, drills, whatever it is. Um, you know, they're probably not going to like it because they're probably going to be doing a lot more special team drills than they thought they were doing uh, in years past. But um, that's, that's the cool thing about special teams is, you know, people may not – know how they can contribute, but just by them coming to work every day, they'll find a way, you know, they'll find a way. And if there's guys on the fringe that are looking to make a spot that are looking to find a way, you know, you come do the punk cover drill and right away you'll find out if this guy wants to play or not. So I'm excited to be with the DBs, uh, you know, in any capacity, you know, I'm excited to be able to stand up in front of the room and talk to the old lineman. It's uh, it's an exciting time for me. And, you know, I'm just looking for every, you know, like I said before, I'm looking for, every opportunity and every challenge that comes with it. And I'll take it head on. Yeah, and Joaquin Bradley, of course, the new DBs coach, uh, coach, congrats on the, the new role. I know you're going to do so well in it. Like you've done everything so far in your career. Uh, congrats again, my friend. Let's talk about it now, court, uh, uh, the Hamilton, the Ottawa red cats, the Ottawa tiger, tiger blacks. What are they? The, the red, Oh, the red blacks. Oh, that's what they are. Uh, Berkey, Sean Burke, the new general manager is certainly making his mark on, on an Ottawa team that, that, you know, that needed a kick in the pants, to be honest. And I mean, that's what they brought him in to do. He's a guy who has a track record of of putting together teams that can compete and, you know, flexing his network as soon as he got to the city. It's only been a few weeks since he's been there and he's managed to to bring in a bunch of talented guys, whether that be Jeremiah, Jalen Acklin, uh, Darius Sirocco, just to name some, some familiar faces, but also other guys from other teams going to Ottawa and and. I almost hazard to say making them an instant contender to, to be a serious team in the East again. William Powell going back to Ottawa as well. That move kind of being an, I I'm really happy for Jeremiah. I'm happy for Dane. I mentioned this on Ottawa radio yesterday, got called up. They wanted, they wanted all the insights on Jeremiah. And I, you know, it, this was really a win, win, win for Everybody involved for the Thai cats to get Dane Evans as a, a proven leader for Dane and Jeremiah. They both get to be starters after battling out for Ottawa, for the CFL. I mean, Ottawa being good. You you've been in that building when it's rocking. I mean, that, that they're such a huge part of this league. Like, I think this is a win, win, win across the CFL, even if it makes the East more competitive, which I think is a great thing too. And, you know, traditionally over the last, you know, how, however long you can count it, the West division has been the powerhouse and the East has always been the question of, you know, 
are there going to be three teams that make the playoffs or two from the East? And I think what we're seeing is the potential to have that shift back over and, and have some really competitive teams. I know Toronto has also been the beneficiary of some ex tie cats moving across to the other side of the QEW with um, another guy going over there uh, who shall remain nameless. <laughs> no, they got, they got a pretty good D tackle, you know, in the free agency. And, um, it's, it's looking like it's going to be a competitive East, but that's what you want because you don't want anything handed to you. Not that it is, this is pro football, but um, you don't want there to be any excuses. You know, you want to play against the best and that's how you truly prove to yourself that you are who you say you are when you go out and they kick that ball off. Yeah. Botang also signing with the, uh, with the red blacks. And I mean, that team's going to be good. You know, I kind of gave them a shot a little bit earlier with their three wins in the last two seasons or six wins in the last two seasons, but they're looking like a good football team. And Paul Apolis is a, is a proven CFL coach. Uh, and we'll see, should be fine. Uh, what else has caught your eye in free agency before we go here? Is there anything else in the last you know 24 hours that's uh, jumped out at you? Cause I mean, we mentioned the competitiveness in the East. What about the receivers getting some big are you paydays? Reading, are you reading Kenny, my mind? Are I you... was sorry. Kenny Lawler has really just set the benchmark for uh, for all-star receivers payday. I mean, if, I, if I'm a – Braylon Addison tweeted about it himself. He said, yeah, man, get that bag. Like, between, you're just making the market for everybody else that much better. Between Kenny Lawler and Duke Williams, uh, these guys are definitely going to get what, what they're worth, man. And let's be honest. like people show up in the stands to see 40 yard completions. They want to see dunks. They want to see those acrobatic catches and big plays. Right. So that's what these guys provide. And across the league, there's, um, you know, different playmakers in different situations. And it's just the makeup of that roster who has the, the space to accommodate somebody who demands that type of paycheck. Right. So, you know, credit to those guys for putting together the body of work that warrants that, but, you know, even, even guys like Weineke, I I believe he signed for, you know, somewhere up uh, above 150. And I mean, uh, that's not, that's nothing to sneeze at, man. This is um, guys going out there, paying the price, you know, they don't, they dedicate so much time to training for this stuff that, I mean, they deserve to get paid and compensated for the sacrifices that they're making. So it's good to see these guys getting paid and, and hopefully that's a trend that continues. Uh, let's just recap what the Thai cats have done today before we let you go. Uh, we can tell you uh, no, no one, no one knew officially to announce today. I mean, if you were listening to this, I'm sure you've been on social media. You've seen the rumors. What we can tell you is that, we can't announce anybody officially, uh, but keep your ears on our, so keep your eyes open on our social media. Keep your ears open on the Thai cats audio network. They did get back Ted Laurent, which is huge ratio buster, such a huge part of that defensive line. They did get back Jamal rule re-signing today. And we heard from Jamal a little bit earlier uh, overall Thai cats. How would you say they've done uh, in free agency? Uh, my friend, what uh, would you give them a grade here? You know, it, it's it's not over yet, but I'd say they made sure they plugged the holes in the boat so that we don't lose uh, everything that we've built over the last so many years. Right. You got those cornerstones. You've got those key guys that you can build around. And of course, like any locker room, there's going to be some changes. But, you know, I, I give them a, I give them an A right now and they got they still got room to bump it up to an A plus. <laughs> All right. People are going to call us biased, but I'm going to give them an A, too, because, I mean, I, I said it at the start. If, if I had given you just a, a, a list of the guys that the Thai Cats had re-signed and I told you that, you know, Edmonton signed all these guys, you'd be looking at them as the, uh, this, the Grey Cup favorites in uh, 2022. So, uh, yes, maybe a little bias in our answers here, but the Thai Cats get an A from us. And like we said, it could get bumped to an A+. Court, I know you're a busy guy. You got your community work uh, with the Thai Cats offices, so I appreciate you spending a couple of minutes here this afternoon getting to talk CFL free agency. It's been a lot of fun. Man, anytime I get to talk a Thai Cat ball, I love it, so I appreciate you. All right, keep it locked to the Thai Cats Audio Network all this week for exclusive free agency content, again, here on the Thai Cats Audio Network. <laughs>